Simon, um, where are you from? I live in St Albans and my studio is here in Harlow and uh, my parents were born in what is now West Pakistan uh, and I was born in India and then um, spent the early part of my life in the UK from 1965 in Southall. I've, I've, I've watched a two-part series, in the middle of a two-part series on the partition, the 75 years of the partition. Um, is it really complicated or really simple, but that doesn't make the story any easier? Um, I. It's not an. It's a not an easy story. However, you look at it. I mean, to my mum, it's a really simple story, which is that um, the British split India. And when I, I think I, I might have said to you before, um, when I was asking my mum about partition. And said, so, Mum, how did you feel about leaving Pakistan? And she said to me, Sami, I didn't leave Pakistan, I left India. So for her, it's a simple story that an event outside her control happened and she had to leave her home and everything that she knew um, in order to start up in a completely different place. So was she brought up in that area that was pre-partition, India? Yes. And somebody, the, the government's administration, the British, rename that area Pakistan West pa yeah West, West Pakistan West Pakistan yeah so she was born she grew up in Lahore and um, then when partition was about to happen because everyone knew when it was going to happen when, it was, when independence would be declared um, their neighbors their Muslim neighbors said to them you need to leave because trouble is coming and um, we won't be able to help you because if we try to help you we'll be in trouble ourselves. So are we marking the 75th anniversary, celebrating, commemorating? Is it something to celebrate? No, I don't think it is something to celebrate actually. Mm. For me it's not something to celebrate but I am doing an event at St Albans Museum Gallery um, tomorrow which commemorates it because I want to acknowledge the people who lost their lives and whose lives just changed completely by that, I by that event. Uh, and tell us a little bit more about the event. Uh, we're going to be making paper boats in St Albans Museum Gallery um, in the afternoon and I'll be reading some of my poetry about partition. But the event, for me, the fact that my parents were displaced by partition and were refugees has led to a, a re uh, kind of lasting interest now in the whole migration crisis um, so the event also acknowledges all the borders and displacements created um, that mean that people have to leave their home not never to return so we'll be doing as well as uh, we're making paper boats um, with handmade paper from India and there will also be yellow and blue paper to acknowledge what's happening in Ukraine right now so you certainly mentioned the word Ukraine, haven't you? The, this is an ongoing process, this idea of partition about who owns what land, etc. Um, it's yeah. ongoing, ongoing in history, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, and the, and the moving around of borders, the recreation of borders, people trying to um, grab land or putting borders in to divide people and divide families. So when did your mother leave West Pakistan? She was 12. So, um, in the in the year of partition, uh, my she and my um, her youngest brother and my grandma, my my granddad sent them first, and then they were very lucky because my granddad's boss, um, in what became West Pakistan, was very wealthy, and he said that anybody he, he could reach his headquarters, which were in what stayed as India in Ambala, he would give them somewhere to live and so they went first and then my granddad came with um mum's older brother with as much as they could bring in a with a horse and cart and did your mother ever return never did she say why not she never felt able to return i mean for years it was quite returning was contentious i think and then i think she just decided that was that part of her life what about you? 
I've never been. I'm really interested to go because I'm because we're Sikh, and apparently there are lots of really beautiful Sikh temples in Pakistan, which I would like to go and see. Do you find you know your interview number fifty four, and, and I've been doing in this project, and I found this is a history, heritage, culture project. It sits there, and I'm also it's not on the politics page. I almost it's like even now I'm looking at thinking, but it's hard to take out the politics from people's countries or the, or the cultural upbringing. Well, you can't because politics. Are, affects every part of our lives and that's why people should vote. <laughs> you really have gone to the politics page, yeah, yeah. a subsection. Yeah, yeah. Um, because politicians control so much of what's available to us and possible for us and politics completely changed my, my mum's life. She had to leave everything behind and start all over again. Are you part of a Sikh community anywhere? Uh, no, um, but I have lots of friends who are Sikh, and I've been, in the last few years I've been meeting lots of Sikh um, poets and writers, and that's been fan that's been really fantastic. And we share our history. But you wouldn't describe yourself as a Sikh artist, would you? Are you no, you're an artist. I'm an artist. Yes, yeah. you know, I'm not an Anglo-Irish journalist. I'm a journalist. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but my heritage it really. Um, underlies my practice. And you talk about your heritage and your, your practice, the works which my camera can catch behind you. Um, there's one of it looks like red little leaves falling down onto a, a globe. Uh, looks, what, what's that about? That actually is a really sad piece. Uh, it was when I was thinking about the 50th anniversary of the creation of um, East Pakistan, which was there was as much horror attached to that as there was to the creation of West Pakistan. And the blue represents um, wells, it represents water, and the red represents saris, because lots of um, women threw themselves into wells rather than be caught by the other side. What do you think is the relationship between Britain and India, Pakistan, Bangladesh now? Do you think it's so many years on now. It's, it's a vexed question, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I mean, that's a very complicated question. I don't think I could answer that easily. You know, I am a British Indian and I'm a very proud British Indian. And um, in a few weeks' time um, here, we're going to be having a Jubilee community party where we're going to be celebrating the Queen's Commonwealth and acknowledging that, you know, there are issues around the Commonwealth, but actually, if it hadn't been for the Commonwealth, we wouldn't be here and we feel that needs to be celebrated. What's that event going to involve? Um, we're going to have people coming and we're going to be sharing food, there'll be events, there'll be um, African drumming, there'll be henna hands, we'll be making, we'll be doing craft activities with children and we'll be sharing good food and tea, <laughs> um, which is a great unifier. <laughs> um, so you said that finally you'd like to go back maybe like to go back one day or go to one day yes um, uh, do you think that will happen um, I think it, it's so difficult with Covid but I think I think so it's it's likely that I will I'll go and nowadays there are um, organizations which um, people who survive partition who are witnesses um, these organizations will actually help them to find their home. Has there ever been anything like a Truth and Reconciliation Commission that they had in South Africa? You know, I don't think there has. I, if there has been, I don't know about it. But I, what there is now in um, Amritsar is a partition museum, um, which co which commemorates partition and collects stories about it. And um, uh, Amritsar, the word Amritsar, I think about the Golden Temple. Is that right on the border? Was it? No, it's not on the border. Yeah. And I, I just mentioned borders, but they're still not happy borders, are they? You know, we just talked about India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, but still there's disputed regions still. There's there? still many, many disputed regions all along the border. It's still guarded. And the really interesting thing about it is that it's um, lit up at night. Um, and there are NASA photographs of it from outer space where you can see the shape of the border from the, with, the li with the lights. And that's another interesting question in itself, isn't it? Because it costs money to light it. 
and neither of these countries has, has an equality of wealth, there's so much poverty, and yet this money spent guarding the border and keeping it lit.